live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. It's the Q covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now here's your host, John Furrier. Hey, welcome back, everyone. We're here live at VMworld 2016. It's the Cube Silicon Angles flagship program. We go out to the events and expect the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, Mark Farley, who's here and now. Good to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you, John. Scott Shanley, Principal Technologist at Micron. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, pleasure to be back. I always enjoy coming on the show, so. So day one is almost in the books. What's your thoughts? I mean, Micron here is doing some pretty interesting things. Flash, storage, again, continuing the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a wonderful thing for us to have the opportunity to be here. VMworld is fairly new to the Micron 38 years of history that we have. We've been very OEM-centric historically. So getting out and talking to the end users, understanding the real needs of our customers, not just what their suppliers say they need from us as a supplier. So building those partnerships and relationships is great. And day one's been great for us. We've been having fun playing Jeopardy down in the booth. So happy in the traffic, good? As expected for when you're competing with sessions, we get you know the average traffic through there, but we get enough people to play Jeopardy, so it's fun. So what's the evolution of the data center? You hear Pat Gaussinger talking about, and by the way, finally admitting public cloud is here, but acknowledging that on-premise will continue to be the dominant configuration. It's, it's interesting, because you have all the different opportunities between the different platforms. You know, There's always going to be on-premise applications, but there's so much you can do with going public with the cloud and going off-premise off for the stuff that makes sense to go there and getting into the virtualized world that we're getting into with the opportunities that we can get with all the new connectivity technologies and the speeds that we can get out of the local storage versus the external storage, if you will, out in the public space, it's, it's great. So it's probably fair to say that you probably wouldn't be here at the show if it wasn't for your integration with vSAN. Exactly, one of our big focuses has been working on the all-flash vSAN. So two years ago at this event, we launched the world's first vSAN. It was an unapproved product at the time, but we put it together and we're able to showcase a 40X improvement out of the box by having an all-flash over even a hybrid-based system, and it's just been ev creating an evolution of that ever since. So we've got different iterations of that coming now. Yeah, so what's the status right now of official versions of VMware with your products? What, what's the right uh, cauldron, if you will? So with the vSAN 6.2 that we have available, we have an AF8 and an AF6 available nodes, we call them ready nodes, that are available through our partner Supermicro as a Micron Accelerated Solution. So our goal was to put something out there that's available. We have a reference architecture for our end customers because not everybody wants to work with a vendor that we chose, but they can get our products, our memory, our DRAM, get our flash products in there. 75% of that box is Micron, so it makes sense to talk to us about it, not just to the vendor of the, the actual ready notes. And so we've branded those Micron accelerated solutions. So as far as having a, a vSAN detailed solution, what kinds of things did you do or what kinds of things did you have to solve to make it the perfect fit or the best fit for vSANs. Exactly, there's a lot of things going on with the vSAN architecture today where we have issues around performance matching and capacity matching. So we know that NVMe, for example, is the big buzz in flash storage today because it's the new interface, but the vSAN architecture that's existing today can't take true advantage of that because it wasn't designed around an NVMe architecture. So we took a SATA drive that would normally be a one terabyte class of drive. That's more than that system can actually handle in the configurations, it can only max out with the vSAN implementation at 600 gigabytes. So we actually custom built a 600 gigabyte drive totally focused on a, an all flash vSAN implementation to tie in with the caching tier that we also have with SAS and PCIe drives. So selling through Supermicro and other outlets, it's, it could be difficult to have you know, contact with end user customers. Are you getting any of that feedback? I mean, where do you, do you see that yourself at Micron? We, we do, so we have an actual sales force now that their sole job is to call on our customers' customers and bring that feedback through both to us internally so we know what to build for them, but also through our partners, whether it be Supermicro or all the OEMs that we know and love, Dell Technologies, uh, HPE, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and what we've also done is put a reference architecture out. So it tells you the exact configuration we put with the socket sizes, the number of DRAM DIMMs, and the number of drives, and you can put it on any server that's out there available from your choice of vendor. Security comes up a lot. It does. Here at this show, especially here. Yeah, the, the world of PCI and HIPAA and TAPP and all, all those wonderful acronyms that I always forget, TAA, that's the one. Uh, it is interesting and we've actually, so we're trying for another first this year and we created an unapproved, too soon to be certified uh, vSAN box that's actually built on another partner of our Cisco UCS. 
that utilizes FIPS certified SAS drives for security, as well as the only TCG enabled SATA drive in that same vSAN architecture. When you say not approved, what does that mean? Like not sanctioned? Well, I don't understand it's not means. certified yet. It's in the certification loop with VMware right now, so it'll, okay. be, it'll, be, on the, it'll be on the AVL within the next couple of weeks. Okay, so that's and just in motion it. process yeah. right now. Exactly, and it's utilizing actually the same drives we had before, but in their configuration that's security enabled, and there's some hoops that we had to go through to make a virtual SAN security enabled. What are the big challenges that you're seeing with VMware right now? Because you mentioned that process brings up some comments we hear in the hallway all the time, is that you want to move fast, the customers want security, and Sanjay Pune is expected to talk tomorrow about this endpoint concept where the apps are coming in. How does that affect the storage equation? It, it just means we need to be very efficient, very fast, and be able to make systems that are upgradable or in-line upgradable for our customers. So if the, if the vSAN 6.2 today has certain limitations, but 6.345 are coming out, the goal is to make sure that whatever we put in the box is able to actually migrate through that so you don't have to buy new hardware every single time a new iteration comes out to optimize around it. And we have the capability through our design center in Austin to work very closely with the VMware organization to solve those problems. Kind of off color question is R&D, not related to the storage here at VMworld, but what are you guys working on? Micron always has a lot of like very chip level, firmware stuff going on, yeah. but what's the R&D innovation that's in the pipeline? Can you talk about that? Yeah, so the latest thing that we've got going is the concept of 3D Crosspoint technologies. Crosspoint was announced last year. It's part of our joint venture that we do with Intel at our IMFT facility out of Lehigh, Utah. We both work on the product uh, as far as the R&D front. We co-develop the solution through the fabrication process, and then when it gets to the chip level form, we get our opportunities to enable the environments in different fashions. So last year Intel branded their product Optane. This year we announced a brand awareness for our, our version of the Crosspoint ar architectures, and it's called the Quantex technology. And Quantex is our way of putting a name to what's new in the world around this uh, Crosspoint architecture. So there's a big crowd chat last week that Dave Vellante ran with a bunch of luminaries uh, in the industry, kind of like an online panel discussion, if you will, on the crowd chat. And the question that I was fascinated with was, um, what will, be, be more dominant in terms of cost and performance, flash or spinning disk? And surprisingly, it wasn't 100% it wasn't towards flash. A lot of people kind of say, no, no, it's cost still relevant on the disk side. It's not going to be dead anytime soon. Right. What's your thoughts on that debate? I, I think the way to look at that is spinning disk in certain applications and in certain use models or certain types of drives is going to die. There's not enough silicon in the world today for flash to take over 100% of the sockets. We're at 5% last year, 10% complete uh, replacement of the storage architectures for 2016. Uh, so, so from a media standpoint, there's just not enough inventory. Yeah, we can't build enough of the media to do all 100% takeover today. Five and 15, 10 and 16, we're looking forward to double digits again in 17. So we're going to continue to replace those sockets. Uh, when it comes to the cost play, the hard part there is you don't want to, everybody likes the dollar per gig. We're all used to dollar per gig, so if it's a 15K, 10K, whatever. We've been very open that flash media is never going to be a dollar per gig play. It's, look at it from an IO perspective, look at it from a TCO model perspective. So a good example is we go even more into the public cloud. If you're going to a co-location facility, you're paying for floor tile and for power. That's all they care about as far as the metrics, how they bill you. If you have to put in four racks to get spinning media in that system, or you have to put in one rack because my flash media is so much faster, I saved you three floor tiles of space. That'll pay the disks back in less than six months. Hey Scott, so for people that aren't here, if they came to your booth, what would they see? What's the new hottest thing that you're showing off there? We're, we're highlighting the Quantix technology, of course. Those are products that are going to be coming out through partners and being announced by partners here in the next six months and really into the market after the Pearly launch because that's when we can truly really take advantage of that architecture. Uh, the other big thing that we're having fun with down there is we've put a 24 terabyte NVMe drive and we have a live demo of that in our oh. booth. So we're actually able to show off the speed speeds, slots and watts to, for all those people that like to see those numbers of a running 24 terabyte drive. So what kind of demo is it? Is it a database system or what, how is it? This particular operation is just a, a simple file script so that we can put some pretty graphics behind it, but it highlights, so a couple weeks ago at the Flash Memory Summit, a whole bunch of people came out with, I've got the world's fastest this, or I've got the largest density that. None of it was all live and running, where we were able to put out a very high capacity drive, 24 terabytes is a lot of disk for someone to mess with, and show that we can get concurrently five gigabytes per second read-write mix 
regardless of sequential or random. Yeah, with NVMe, that must be screaming fast. Yes, exactly, and it is NVMe-based, absolutely, because we want to take advantage of those speeds. Scott, for the people that aren't here, and I love that question, what are they, what's going on in VMworld this year? I mean, obviously they're you know, attesting to the fact that public cloud's out there, that's obvious. What other things could you share from your perspective for the folks who couldn't make it? What's the vibe, what's the key trends that's coming out of this show? Well, we see the, the VMware shows, all, VMworld shows always having lots of fun. A lot of the talk was about what's going on with the whole merger stuff, which is just fun side conversation. As far as on the, the floor, we're seeing a lot of innovation in all of the different architectures that we're looking at. So vSAN, of course, is still a big topic for a lot of people. It's also the consolidation of storage architectures, so where we're getting a lot more hybrid versus solid state, or is it, you know, we're not talking disk anymore. We're talking, mm -hmm. is it flash and how much, which is really cool regardless of what booth you go to, whether it's a Dell and HPE, or to one of our partners like a Nutanix or a Pure Storage or any of those kinds of guys. And, the, and those guys are trying to figure out the ecosystem play, so I was just talking with, with the folks from uh, HPE and it was clear that they'd like to see IBM, which is on stage for the folks who didn't see, big announcement with IBM Cloud, which is a testament to this open ecosystem. Exactly. What does that mean? I mean, does that mean more access to, access to all the uh, VMware technology? What does that mean for the ecosystem? Well, the ecosystem changes are really interesting right now. We, we've kind of started seeing the, the demise, if you will, of the big boxes. And all the guys that are building the big boxes know it's coming. That's why they've all branched out or bought or acquired startups that are building the new latest and greatest thing. We're never going to get rid of them completely. It's kind of like the migration to Flash. It takes time and there's years and years of infrastructure sitting out there that we can't just rip out and replace. So seeing the ability to watch these different architectures move in that direction is really cool. And from an ecosystem point of view, there's a lot of new players that can play in this more server-based architecture that's taking over for the traditional SAN NAS architectures. So if someone asks you, Scott, tell me what's going on with VMware. Where have they settled in the stack? I mean, VMware has to find that spot. They have a hypervisor, you mentioned that earlier. Are they finding a nice, sweet spot they can settle into? I think they finally found that nice, comfortable spot. They're, they're doing a good job of getting a, a, a broader spectrum of how they're putting everything through with the, the vSphere's and all the different architectural implementations and getting those up into where customers can truly take advantage of it. One of the things they're working on now is, you know, licensing costs are always fun and you have to kind of deal with that and when you put in something like an all flash array, you reduce the number of required licenses by improving the efficiencies of systems. So watching them pay attention to that and architect around it is also helping keep them in that footprint. Great, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. This is our director set. I want you to give you the last word and spend a minute to just talk about, real quick, summary of what you said earlier about what's going on in this show and what's next for Micron. So for this show and for Micron, uh, the VMware, VMware architectures are something that we're very keen to work with. Uh, we've got one of the only 35 people ever to be certified on vSAN as a VM expert that works at Micron. He's actually downstairs in our booth. Uh, our focus is really talking about not only today, but what is next. That's where we get into things like a 24 terabyte drive, or how do we enable Quantex and the Quantex architectures correctly so that they don't have a niche, but they are able to actually proliferate themselves and grow very consistently within the market space. Josh Hadley with Micron here at the director set at VMworld. This is theCUBE, I'm John Farrier with Mark Farley. This is theCUBE.